Hello, children of God, and welcome. I want us to talk about that word today. What does welcome mean? If your town is anything like mine, there's probably a lot of businesses that you might see signs kind of like this sitting in lately. Signs that say, welcome back, or welcome in, or just welcome. Because for a long time, things have been closed and shut down, and now places are glad to be open again Yes, we're very glad to see you too. And so they're so eager to have that availability that they will tell people welcome. Welcome means come on in. We're glad you're here. Welcome communicates something that says we are glad you're around. It says you're valued. It says you're treasured. It says you should be in a place. You might go to a house and see a little welcome mat that says yes. Come on in, you are welcome. When someone tells you thank you, you might say you're welcome. I'm glad you have it. I'm glad you're here. I value you. Well, do we always mean that when we say welcome? For instance, you see the signs on the stores that say, yes, welcome back, come on in. Unless you've been sick or unless you are at risk or unless you're not wearing a mask or unless you have a high fever, now, to be sure, we want to be considerate and caring and take care of people and keep things safe, but I wouldn't say everyone is welcome under those conditions. And maybe you have a little doormat that says welcome unless your feet are dirty or unless you smell kind of strange or unless you have cat hair all over you. It's not 100% welcoming. You know, even in history, we've had things that people have done that may or may not be quite welcoming. Do you recognize this? Do you know what that statue is? It's a very special thing called the Statue of Liberty. It's a special landmark, a historic space in New York, in America. And behind it there is something called Ellis Island, which was a place that immigrants would come through when they came to America. So people who had come from Europe, from other countries, would pass through Ellis Island. And this was a special statue because it was a welcoming point. It was a statue that even had a little poem that said, bring me your tired and your sick, your people that want to be free, come to America, welcome to America and be free. But then they would pass through this immigrant station, this processing center, and if they were sick, if they had eye problems, if they didn't have a place to go to, if they didn't have a job or a family, they could sometimes get sent back home. After that long boat journey, they might have to turn around and go back because we want to welcome people in, but maybe not everybody. And, you know, after that, there were a lot of people that made it to America that didn't feel so welcomed. Sometimes doors would have signs that say, if you came from a certain country, or if you look a certain way, or if you believe a certain thing, you're not welcome here. And even now, we sometimes struggle with this in our towns and in our country. Sometimes people are conflicted, and some people think that we should welcome immigrants or people from other places. Some people think we need to keep them out. We need to just have the people that are already here. Now, there's a balance here because we want to be safe and we can't just let everybody all of a sudden come to a place. But what does it mean to be welcoming? Jesus wants us to welcome other people. Jesus said in the Bible, if you are welcoming to others, you're welcoming to me. He told the disciples, you should welcome everyone. Welcome little children. See, in Jesus' day, not everyone thought that little children were so great or worthwhile or valuable. They kind of would turn them away. And Jesus said, no, welcome the children. If you take care of them, it's like you're taking care of me. And Jesus said, if you welcome me, you welcome the one who sent me. And of course, who sent Jesus? God. So he was telling these people, if you are welcoming to others, it's like you're welcoming me. It's like you're welcoming God. Now, we want to remember that. We want to remember to value other people. Now, this doesn't mean 
with, that you just leave your door open and let any wandering wallaby come on in. It's a true story. The neighborhood watched the other day. It said there was a wallaby wandering about. I don't know where it came from. But it doesn't mean that you just let anything happen to you and you throw caution to the wind. We still need to be safe and we still need to make sure we take care of ourselves. That's okay. But when you welcome other people, it shows that you love them, that you realize and recognize that Jesus loves them too. Jesus loved everyone. He loved little children. He loved people who were hurt, people who were sick, people that no one else would even touch or go near. Jesus loved and welcomed and accepted them, so much so that he died for them, died for all of us, died for you and me just as much as he died for people that might smell funny or look funny or be covered in cat hair or dog hair or anything. Jesus died for all of us. God so loved the world that he gave his son so that whoever believes in him could have eternal life. Anyone. That gift of eternal life is for everyone and for anyone. And we want to remember to be welcoming to others because we recognize the value that God sees in us. We recognize that he's done an amazing thing by giving us Jesus, by giving us life now and forever. And because of that, we welcome others. In our churches, sometimes even churches can feel to people like places that are not so welcoming. And that's pretty sad because churches are for the lost and the lonely and the hurting. We want to make sure people are valued there. We want to make sure that we tell others we love them. That can mean opening our arms, or maybe not right now because of all this no touching restrictions. So maybe it means talking to someone, sending a card, sending a letter or just recognizing that they're people and that they're valuable and that Jesus loved them enough to die for them, all of them. So we want to welcome them into God's family, welcome them into the kingdom and love them because that's what Jesus would do. So remember, Jesus wants us to love, to value, to care about, to welcome everyone, no matter what. In our hearts, we have a space of welcome. So why don't we pray and we can thank God for welcoming us into his family. Dear God, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for welcoming us. Help us to welcome other people as we care about them, as we show them your love, and as we recognize that they are made in your image. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus in his name. Amen. Go welcome someone. Make some disciples. See you next time.